Hey everyone, this is Sebastian Torres and I'm going to show you how to turn these 3D renders into lifelike images using Comfy UI and the LCM LoRa's. Stick around to the end and I'll show you how you too can get a hold of this workflow for Comfy UI. A couple of weeks ago I showed you how to use LCM LoRa's to create animations with Automatic 11.11. Now for the longest time ever I've been saying that I was not going to get into Comfy UI. That has changed because Comfy UI has changed the game completely when it comes to animating using Static Fusion. So what I'm going to show you now is how I take this character, which I've animated in Blender, and feed it through a workflow in Comfy UI that's going to completely change it into a more realistic sort of vision. Now, what are the benefits of this? The benefits are that I can export this out through Blender without having to use, let's say, 15 minute render times per frame. I can render this out in let's say 25 seconds at most, maybe 30 seconds using the Cycles render engine because you can't really use the EV render engine. It doesn't really have the sort of lighting that you need to make it look realistic. So let's have a look at this. I've created this character using the human generator. If you haven't used a human generator, it's amazing. I'm not sponsored by it, but I really swear by it. It will hide the hair so the viewport will move a little bit faster. But we've got all these options here that we can change on the character. So the head shape, the muscles, everything. Now with the standard clothing, it's very limited. It doesn't really have a whole lot to choose from. So I've taken this flight suit and actually changed the colors around and one of the shoes and changed the color around so it'll look like it's part of the suit. Now the good thing is because we are feeding this through stable diffusion, it won't know the difference between this and the shoe so it'll think that it's all one piece which is exactly what i want and the animation that i've created i'll show you the camera angle so let's play through that then it cuts to a close-up of the face to do a little bit of a slow motion on the face and she flies away as you can see i've added this explosion this kind of like shockwave effect and i've actually used embergen to create that but if i show you what it'll actually look like once it's rendered, you'll see that the shockwave actually looks like smoke. And we've got 15 seconds render time. Now this is crucial because we don't want it to take too long because what's the point otherwise? So now the other thing to consider is the background. What have I done to use to get this background? Use the HDRI Maker. Both of these are paid add-ons for Blender, but I really swear by them because they, they save you so much time. You can do this on your own but really to get this sort of effects that you can use using the HDRI Maker, it's gonna take you quite a while to, to get used to it because you can actually put the character on the ground. As you can see, we do have an actual ground plane that we can put a character onto. And the good thing is that you also get the shadows, which is fantastic. Now, obviously I don't have that here because I've got her floating in the air. So she's kind of like a uh, superhero, supergirl sort of character, pink hair. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is actually export it out using the cycles and you'll notice that I've got 512 as our max samples and I've actually put this down to 0.05 noise threshold. If I was to raise this to 0.1, it'll be a little bit less quality, uh, but I believe it comes in like stock, it'll come with uh, 0.01 and the problem with 0.01 and I think for 4K max samples is that it will take you roughly about five minutes to render each frame of these scene we don't want that we want it to be nice and quick nice and clean because it's going to go straight into stable diffusion it doesn't need to be 100 percent perfect and i'm also rendering at 1440 by 815 pixels 25 frames a second and it's 118 frames just make sure you tell it where you want it to save. Make sure you save it before you start rendering just in case it crashes. Uh, Blender is notorious for that, but it's still an amazing product. Now this is gonna take a while, so we're gonna skip ahead and jump into Comfy UI now. Now this is the workflow that we're gonna be using in Comfy UI. And I have to actually give a big thanks to AI Warper who got me onto this workflow. You've probably seen AI Warper's work on X, that Pixar style matrix scene looks unbelievable. Now that we're in here, you'll see I've loaded the image sequence that we've got out of Blender and I've changed the width to 1440 by 815. And over here, we need the pixel perfect to be a similar size. I'll be using the Realistic Vision 5.1. This system actually works with Animate Diff. I know that I've harped on about Animate Diff not being ready for animation, but for some reason in Comfy UI, it's more than ready. 
I believe. I'm going to run it through the 1.5 LoRa here, and let's keep the clip skip at minus one. I've noticed that clip skip works quite a bit differently to the way it does in automatic 11.11, so just keep that in mind. We've got quite a few different things here. So that our control net, we're going to use the control GIF, which AI Warper told me is actually the holy grail of animating in Comfy UI. We'll also be using open pose, using the DW pose estimation. We've got this anime diff loader with the improved 3D motion model from Civit AI. And the good thing about using the LCM, again, as I said in the last video, we can keep our steps quite low. So I'm actually gonna go with 12 steps and our start step needs to be at six. If we have it any higher than half of what our steps are, it'll crash the workflow. As our prompt, we've got Asian girl with pink hair wearing a black leather superhero costume, motion blur. Now, I'm not too sure if this is like automatic 11.11 where I should have this here or not, but I'll leave it in there for now. And obviously I've got a negative prompt here. So then I'll make sure to actually put where it is I want it to save. So it'll save it within a folder called Superhero 4 and it'll actually name it number 4. And this is our video combined. So it's going to take all our frames and turn it into a 24 frames. No, we want it to be 25 frames a second. 25 frames a second mp4 video now the quality of the video isn't going to be the best but it's not bad once we have all that ready to go we can cue the prompt let's zoom out so we can see the process as it goes along and now we'll and now we'll click prompt and now we'll cue the prompt and you'll see it actually runs through the entire workflow in this case this part of control net will take a little bit of time because we do have about 118 frames. So if we go here, using open pose, it's detecting one person. It's going through each frame, creating an open pose image for each one. Now you can see that in these last couple frames, it couldn't detect a person. And that's because as you saw in the original video, she flies away from the camera. So at that point in that angle, there's no way that open pose will be able to see what's going on. Now it's moved on to the VAE encode. It actually takes in the original image plus the VAE. So now it's over to the K sampler. sampler. And you can see that it's gonna take a while in here. Now it won't show you every single frame as it's going, like we did with automatic 11.11. It's actually gonna go, it'll, it'll show you that it's done 25%, 50%. Sometimes it does odd numbers, but usually it's about 20 and it won't actually show you the frames. The reason why it won't show you the frames is because it's actually saving it to the RAM. Keep that in mind, if you have a uh, low RAM, it's, you're gonna struggle doing this, especially at this size. I would actually go a much smaller resolution and then upscale from there. So now I'm gonna skip ahead to when this is done because it will take quite a while. Now it's gonna save the images and it will send it over to the video combiner where it will combine all the frames into our actual video. Now the good thing is that it's actually going to save the frames in one folder and then the video as well. That way if you want the frames and not the video because it's a lesser quality, you've got the original frames that it work with as well. So if you zoom in here, you see you've got all your frames. I love that it's I love that it's actually given it regrow. So it looks a little bit more realistic than what you get out of blender okay so that's finished now and if we go here and we do show preview use our video and we'll do resume preview now that looks pretty awesome obviously this animation is quite rudimentary but if you take the time you can actually get some amazing results using this system so if you're interested in doing something like this using comfy ui I'll be releasing a longer video for the people on my newsletter so that way it explains exactly what it is that I'm doing, how it is that I'm doing it, which models you require. Uh, if you know how to use Comfy UI, you probably already know how to get this up and going pretty quick. And so yeah, for the rest of you, you'll be able to use this workflow to get started pretty quick. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this system? Are you gonna be able to use it in your pipeline? Click like and subscribe and check out this next video.